the B-2 Spirit, one of America's most mysterious and most known warplanes. To some, it's a mythical beast flying high above, while to others, it's a point of pride. The B-2 is a rock star, right? Uh, it, anywhere the B-2 goes, people it's an iconic airplane. Everybody knows what the B-2 is. While many have seen it fly at sporting events and on TV, very few have gotten to see it up close. And of those few, even fewer have actually become a B-2 pilot, one of the hardest things to achieve in the U.S. Air Force. So how do they get there? It starts here at undergraduate pilot training where students fly the T-6 Texan II and the T-38 Talon. Then some pilots head directly to B-2s, while others fly something else first. Yeah, so, so we like people from all different kinds of communities because we can learn from each other uh, everywhere. But, but to be a, a B-2 pilot and, and, and a pilot in the United States Air Force, you just have to be hardworking, driven, uh, obviously intelligent, but, but, but most of the time is where, where there's a will, there's a way. Um, anyone who's willing to learn and to, uh, and to put the time and effort into it will make it through the program and they'll typically become the top, the best of the best. It's kind of a melting pot of aviators here. You know, we get inputs from everybody and we all kind of gel together and learn from each other's past experiences. But regardless of where they come from, those pilots all come to Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, the home of the B-2 and the 5 and 9th Bomb Wing. Whiteman has been the B-2's only operational home, with the first operational jet arriving in 1993. And with there only being 21 of these aircraft ever built, and 20 flying today, it's a tight-knit community. And because of that, and the fact that the aircraft isn't easy to learn to fly, it's a highly selective process to even enter training. We're just looking for really good pilots, just like any other community um, is looking for really good folks. So we need folks that can fly for a very long time, at a very, very high skill level. Once students arrive at Whiteman, they're assigned to the 13th Bomb Squadron, home of B-2 training. There they'll go through their initial qualification courses where they'll just learn the basics. Then they'll go into the Bomb Squadron and they'll teach them the actual mission qualification stuff, how to employ what the enemy uh, and the adversaries around the world look like uh, so that we can counter them. And then as you get in the OSS and the more experience, we start to dive into the uh, the the more technical features of it, and then exactly how to train people and how to teach them how to go and do that. We're a very small community, and because of that, we're allowed to have a smaller classroom setting. We typically have an initial qualification course of about four students at a time, and those are the four guys you kind of grow up with uh, in your B2 career. You'll go through mission qualification with them, and then typically you'll end up going through a flight instructor course upgrade with them as well. And that's when guys start to break off, whether they go to weapon school or test pilot school from that point. But, but it really takes quite a bit of, uh, of community to get them to that point. While in training and as a qualified pilot, students will fly the 509th's other aircraft, the T-38 Talon. The B-2 and the T-38 probably could be no uh, more further from, from apart. Uh, the B-2, highly advanced, highly automated airplane. The T-38, which you see behind me, uh, not a single computer in that. So in the B-2, flying is almost secondary. So the primary, your primary focus in the B-2 is mission. It's, it's, it's a fight, it's, it's getting uh, a three ship across the range, um, where flying has got, almost got to be secondary and natural here. The T-38, flying is the primary purpose. It's again, to keep those hands uh, skills warm, uh, to keep them fresh. But when it comes to actually flying the B-2, pilots have nothing but praise. It's a very smooth plane to fly thanks to the flight computers that control its surfaces very well. It's, it's a beautiful machine. Another key aspect of training, beyond just flying the B-2, is the length of time missions take, often more than 30 hours, which takes a huge toll on the body. As a result, pilots have to be able to train their bodies to handle that amount of time in the air. And at Whiteman, that training is the responsibility of Captain James Dreibelbus, an aerospace physiologist. One of my goals is to keep air crew performing at those high levels and achieve that optimization for that, that longer duration, X amount of period of time through different waypoints and time zone changes and how those different factors are going to affect those individuals on board. Since there are only 20 B-2s in existence, a lot of training flights have to happen in the simulators at the Mission Training Center at Whiteman. One key training sortie they oversee is a 24-hour flight designed to simulate a strike mission anywhere in the world. And according to one pilot, being in a simulator that long is almost like a road trip. Uh, you're stopping by the uh, fast food restaurant and you get the, uh, the double cheeseburger and the fries and the shake and everything and you're going to put yourself to sleep. But if you don't eat anything, you're also going to feel miserable. So you got to find that happy uh, middle point. And by doing that 24 hour uh, whisk to get somebody mission qualified, it helps you learn those things about yourself before you do it in the jet for real. Focusing inside the cockpit on all the uh, various tasks that 
go along with uh, getting to where you're going and making sure that you're going to be able to employ the weapons effectively and get the effects that you want. And beyond just flying the aircraft or staying awake to do so, students have to learn the B-2's main mission, dropping bombs on bad guys. Really our mission here is to be lethal. That's it. So if there is something on this planet that needs to be destroyed and our elected senior officials uh, deem it necessary to be destroyed, the B-2 stealth bomber will find a way and we carry the capability and range of weapons from the conventional side of a 500 pounder up to our 30,000 pounder massive ordnance penetrator, the GBU-57. And then if that can't kill it, we've got the nuclear option as well. So the B-2 holds just about every target on this planet at risk. But regardless of the type of mission, from a training sortie to a strike mission, those who fly the B-2 have to execute at a high level because when the B-2 is seen, it makes itself heard in a big way.